How's it going my friends? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing well. Today I'm doing a fun little comparison between two chairs at completely opposite ends of the price point spectrum. Let's take a look. Let's see what we have here today. So first off in one corner, we have this 100 to 120 ish dollar crappy chair that I got at Staples. Uh, you can see right here on Amazon, it's going for about 115, 116 US. This is pretty much your basic bitch chair. All right, we're going to call it BBC, which is what I'll be referring it as in this video. That's not to be confused with the British broad broadcaster or anything else that happens to share the same acronym. Nothing comes to mind personally. And in this corner, we have our top of the line high-end gaming chair. This is the Vertigear Trigger 350 that retails for a whopping $700, nearly seven times the amount as our BBC over here. And you'll please forgive the rolled up dollar that I have here. I, I was just looking at the price point. I was half expecting this chair to come included with a kilo of cocaine strapped underneath the seat. But since that's clearly not the case, we can go ahead and remove this. Now, clearly this is not a racing chair per se. However, it is aimed and marketed at gamers who want to get the utmost quality, flexibility, design, and comfort out of their desktop sitting experience. So it's going to be an interesting comparison because to the untrained eye, if you were just walking by and you saw these two chairs, you might not notice that one was necessarily worth seven times the amount as the other. So it'll be an interesting comparison today to see what you get for your money at either end of the spectrum. So kicking things off with some design elements. When you're talking about the Trigger 350, you're actually working with some really nice DuPont TPEE mesh, which is a high quality mesh. It holds its retention a lot better than the cheaper stuff that's found on the BBC, for example. So as you sit in this chair for months and years on end, you'll notice that the mesh actually maintains its shape a lot better than, for example, this cheap chair. I mean, Heather's only been sitting, my wife has been sitting in this chair for maybe the last few months only, and already you can tell the mesh here, on the seat anyway, is just this nasty sort of loose, sag, it's like saggy foreskin, all right? Saggy foreskin, nice, tight foreskin, okay? Super taut, all right? It's gonna maintain its sort of shape over the years, uh, and that is what Vertigear is guaranteeing. There's a 10-year warranty behind this chair, which definitely instills confidence in the product. That being said, even with the basic mesh that you're getting on the BBC, you're still getting uh, much more breathability and sort of ventilation than you would with, say, a solid material like cold foam or any kind of fabric or leather uh, that's just straight up, you know, um, completely solid. And if you look over here, you can see that the stitching job on our budget chair is already starting to come undone. I mean, it's pretty low quality here. Um, you're getting staples that are sticking out, potentially poking you if you sit the wrong way. That's not very nice. So, I mean, it stands to reason that basic bitches get basic stitches, whereas you're not really seeing that problem over here with the trigger. Now, granted, I've only been sitting in this chair for a couple days now, and only time will tell how well the stitching truly holds up, but the idea here is that it's using higher quality materials and is going to last you quite a bit longer than the average basic stuff. Now, one final thing about the mesh design here is that it can add a tremendous amount of value for people who sweat easily, like myself. I mean, I could sweat up a storm just playing a video game for an hour straight, which is pretty pathetic, but that's just me. So if you're in the same boat, having this additional breathability can really reduce the amount of body heat that's trapped in your chair, which is gonna help you stay cool. Now, apart from the mesh, the Trigger 350 also has these really nice, genuine calfskin leather accents on the backrest and the seat, which look fantastic in black, and they have this really nice dead cow smell to them, and I just absolutely love it. Uh, but bear in mind, though, that makes this chair not vegan, okay? And, and if you're talking about someone like my wife, who's a vegetarian at heart, but has uh, some vegan tendencies, she's already gone ahead and rebranded this chair as the Triggered 350. Um, that being said, the first time she sat in it, it didn't take long for her to put her morals aside and decide that she was going to use this chair after my review is over. So um, that being said, uh, it is a very nice looking chair. I personally love the leather accents and I can't think of anything I love while gaming more than the scent of dead cow. Let's take a look at the back side of these chairs. Let's check out that booty. All right. So starting with the Trigger 350, we've got a full metal body. All right, from head to toe. There's even a bar on top where you can mount an optional headrest if you so choose. You can purchase one from Vertigear. Where's your head gonna go on the BBC? Eh? No, nowhere. You're gonna have to rely on your lazy ass neck and that's a damn shame. All right, you get a full plastic body on the BBC, which is not gonna hold up to wear and tear nearly as well as a full metal frame. So not only does this give the 350 a distinguished amount of heft, but it just reeks quality. I mean, it just reeks. It reeks more than the calfskin leather. Now, considering the low price point of our BBC here, I was surprised to find any degree of lumbar support at all, but there you have it. Granted, it's just a hard piece of plastic. It does have height adjustment, but it just doesn't feel all that great. All right, and we'll talk about comfort more later. On the Trigger 350, however, you actually get a soft, cushiony pillow for your lower back, all right? You get a lumbar pillow, which is which feels really nice, and it features height adjustment, so you can position it right into the curve of your lower back. 
Now on the Trigger 350, you do get some additional adjustability options that the BBC and other chairs like it simply don't have. For starters, there are buttons on either side of the backrest where if you push those in, it allows you to adjust the angle of the backrest. This is something different than reclining. It just simply pops the bottom of it forward or backward depending on how straight you want the back piece to be. And that's just gonna depend on your comfort level as a user and your preferences and your back shape and all that sort of thing. The other function starts with a button underneath your chair that's super easy to reach where if you push that in, it allows you to change the depth of your seat. So you can actually move the seat closer or further away from the backrest. Uh, I, would, I would suggest moving it closer if you want to pr promote more upright posture and moving it further away if you tend to slouch a little bit more in your chair naturally or if you just have a big old booty. Now I feel like armrests are just as important as lower back support when it comes to a solid office chair. So starting with the BBC here, you've got sort of a, a, a sort of a firm but soft plastic, all right? It feels okay. It feels all right when you put your your arm just straight onto it and it's relatively flat in shape and the edges the edges all around are more or less sort of a right angle sort of sharp here and I have an issue with this because if you have your forearms either too far forward or too far back the edges of these armrests are gonna dig into your arms and cause quite a bit of discomfort without much time going by, and that's not good. Now compare that to the rounded shape of the Trigger 350 armrests, all right? Not only are you getting sort of a more bowed uh, sort of shape on top, but the edges are also rounded, so when you put your arm too far forward or back, it does not dig into your forearm, and it doesn't cause any sort of discomfort. It's extremely, extremely comfortable compared to the BBC. The armrests on the BBC feature six level height adjustment. There's a little latch that you can pull to uh, kind of go up increment at a time. It works fairly well and they've even printed numbers on the inside of the armrest so you can really easily tell that both armrests are level. Now I hate to say it, but the height adjustment on the armrests for the Trigger 350 are not quite as convenient. Going up is no problem. If you want to increase the height, you just simply pull it up. There's no switch or lever or latch that you need to hold in while you do it. But if you want to go down, you can't just go down one notch. Let's say you went up too high. You can't just go down. You have to go all the way up and that'll release the armrest, allow you to reset it all the way back to the bottom. And then from there, you can try again and go back up in increments. There are indicators lines on the outside of the armrest, but they're not labeled, so it's kind of a hassle to have to count them up just to make sure that your armrests are sitting at the same height level. Uh, that being said, this is more of a set it once and forget it type of affair, so it's probably not going to be a problem for most people. Now, I probably should have mentioned this at the beginning of the video, but whatever, is that this chair gets its name from the fact that it uses around 350 individual components to make up its structure, and two of those components are these triggers found directly underneath the armrest for easy and convenient access. These triggers control the two most basic and frequently used functions of any office chair, which is seat height adjustment and the reclining of the backrest. The benefit of having these triggers underneath the armrest should be pretty obvious, guys. I mean, this way you don't have to fiddle around blindly with some sort of lever underneath your chair uh, to make these adjustments. Instead, you barely have to move your arm, and within one second, probably, you can already be making these adjustments on the fly super quickly and easily. The trigger on the right adjusts the seat height adjustment, and there's a fairly nice range there, so whether you're, you know, Kyle Fun size or, you know, Fractal Josh size, you should be well accommodated with the Trigger 350. Pulling the left trigger allows you to recline the backrest uh, so far back, in fact, that you would almost need that optional headrest if you didn't want your head to just sort of dangle off the edge of the chair. Now when the backrest is allowed for free movement, one of my favorite features about this chair is that you can adjust the amount of resistance or pressure that's required to push the backrest back. Uh, and that can be adjusted by this little crank here underneath the chair. Um, it's just a crank that turns very easily, it's super accessible, and that will allow you to either increase or decrease the amount of pressure required to get that backrest back. So some people prefer a firmer resistance like myself, other people just want to barely lightly tap the backrest and have it fold down all the way. Regardless of your preference, it's just super nice to be able to manually adjust that setting. Oh hey BBC, I almost forgot about you. Look at these nasty ass levers. Get the f*** out of here. Now at the bottom of your Trigger 350, you'll find an aluminum alloy 5 star base. It's super sturdy, I'd give it a 5 out of 5 myself, and it could probably you could probably beat someone to death with it, which is always a good benchmark for how sturdy something is. Uh, and then you've also got these nice wheels. These are some nice roller ball bearing wheels. All right, you get five of them, obviously. Uh, metal and plastic construction. They're really tailored for either carpet or hardwood floor, but they really shine on hardwood from what I've been told. I don't personally have any hardwood in my floor because I'm a poor person, but they're supposed to be incredibly quiet on hardwood floor, and they're supposed to glide incredibly well 
also. So that's gonna be uh, far superior than these cheapo casters on the BBC, which these are noisy as hell on a flat surface. Uh, granted, they do roll a bit nicer on carpet. I will say that uh, the, the Trigger 350, at least with these wheels, the non-special edition, these are a little bit stiff on carpet, so you might wanna consider getting a plastic desk mat if you're gonna be using this chair in a carpeted environment. That being said, the special edition of the Trigger 350 does already include some nicer wheels. They're slightly better at, uh, at gliding, I believe, and they also have a, a more improved uh, bearing design. And I believe you can also purchase those wheels a la carte if you wanted to upgrade your, your non-special edition Trigger 350. Now, arguably the most important thing that people look out for when purchasing a new desk chair is how comfortable it is. The comfort level is really a top priority for most people. And this is also one of the most difficult things to sort of describe in a review like this, simply because it's entirely subjective. I can tell you all the specs and little features about these chairs, but the comfort level is going to differ from person to person. For me personally, I like the Trigger 350 a lot. It's incredibly comfy, particularly the lower back and the armrest that just does it for me. Wifey Sauce agrees this is way more comfortable than the uh, the BBC over here. And, and really, when you sit in the BBC for the first time in the first 20 seconds, it ain't bad. For 120 bucks, you're like, well, it's not that much less comfortable than the Trigger 350 to warrant, you know, seven times the price amount. It's when you're sitting in these chairs for three plus hours, guys. If you're if you're in your desk chair for 20 minutes at a time and that's it, then get this one. Get the BBC and save a crap ton of money. But if you're if you're if you're used to doing longer gaming sessions or just longer work sessions, then that's when you're really going to notice how much more comfortable this is and how much more support there is for your lower back in particular with that nice little pillow there. It's just more ergonomic in every way and the fact that you can sort of tailor this chair, there's more customizability options to really fit it to your body makes this overall a much more enjoyable sitting experience in the long run. The fact of the matter here is that this is a fantastic product. The Trigger 350 is incredibly comfortable regardless of your body shape or size. Okay, the, the one gripe that I have, the main gripe, apart from the little nitpicks about the armrest height adjustment, is that the price is a bit overwhelming. Okay, and especially, and this wouldn't even be such an issue if it wasn't targeted at gamers. Because most gamers, correct me if I'm wrong guys, would rather take their $700 and spend it on a high-end processor or a graphics card than dump it into a chair. As important as chairs are, even more so for your health and your posture in the long run of things, a chair is a better investment than a graphics card. You're gonna replace your graphics card a couple years down the line. That being said, that's just not where the gamer's mentality is right now. They're gonna take that money elsewhere and they're probably gonna end up buying a chair that's somewhere between pretty crappy BBC and super high-end Trigger 350. They're probably gonna go right in the middle, maybe spend three to $500 on chair instead of one or the other of these extremes. So to be perfectly clear, I am giving this chair my full 100% recommendation. At the same time, it feels weird for me to tell all of you guys at home to go out and buy one of these chairs immediately when I know deep down that most of us probably can't afford it. So that's the sort of internal struggle that I'm dealing with right now. And maybe you guys can help shed some light of your own in the comments below. Is this too much to pay for a gaming chair? Is it worth $700? If not, what's the most you'd be willing to fork out for a chair that's gonna last you potentially 10 plus years? Always curious to hear your thoughts in the comments, guys. Be sure to blow them up and toss me a like on the video, of course, before you go, if you enjoyed the video. While you're at it, feel free to check out Bitwit Ultra, my ad-free early access channel for a buck fifty a month. The first two weeks are completely free and you can back out anytime, even before you have to pay a single cent. So go ahead and check that out, guys. Other than that, thank you all so much for watching. I love you, take care, and I'll see you guys very soon in the next video.